Isaac Newton spends years of his life studying the motion of objects and he studied all the sciences being created by Galileo, all the sciences being created by all the previous scientists to be able to understand if the motion of the objects can be described in a better way and if you are able to explain how the objects are behaving and why they are behaving the way they are behaving. Those well spent years of research resulted in a very useful science for humanity that's been created by Isaac Newton. He created the first Newton's first law of motion, Newton's second law of motion, Newton's third law of motion. Those laws of motion were built on the equations of motion that we discussed earlier. He used those, he took them to the lab with a certain practical experiments that led him to more observations and let him be able to build new science and new equations on that old well-known science. After that, he even came out with the description and initial description of how the universe work in terms of planets why the moon is moving the way he is moving and why all the planets including earth are separated in certain distance to each other while they are in a certain orbits and rolling around the sun and all those details and he came out with the first description of gravity he was able to describe the forces of gravity between the planets in the universe regardless if those equations been used until today in terms of gravitation or not but he came out with something that helped humanity understand better how things are moving and why things are behaving the way they are behaving in terms of what is well known in the scientific community as the mechanical description of the universe so let's study together the Newton's great first law of motion. Some of those laws could be very obvious to you and you know it by common sense, but the trick is capturing that common sense into a well-measured equation and through experimentation that will prove that the equation you're putting in is an equation that makes sense and actually describing the real motion of that object. Newton's first law saying, if you have an object that is sitting in a certain place that object will be stand still in that place until a force will affect on it and move it to another place and the moving object will keep moving in his own direction in his own freeway until a force come in and stop that object from moving so you can imagine there is a ball on the table you sit it and you settle it down on the surface of the table. That ball will stay there unless somebody moved the ball with a certain force or somebody moved the table with a certain force that will move that object from his standstill position. In this case, the ball will stay on the surface of the table as long as the world stands, as long as there is no force affecting on it. And if you roll that ball, let's say there is no friction, there is no walls to hit the ball with, there is a flat surface that is endless there's no borders to it and it is very smooth to the point like the ball is not scrubbing over the surface or generating any friction the ball will keep rolling forever until somebody comes in and apply a force into it in short story until somebody hold it or stop it from moving so the moving object will keep moving unless a force will stop it and a stopped or stand still or an object at rest will stay an object at rest until a force comes in and move it out of this state you can see here there's a person standing in the yard that person is not applying any force he's not exerting any velocity he's not doing any displacement he will keep standing there unless somebody comes in and push him or there's a wind flowing or there's an earthquake or something like that so a standstill person having zero force and zero velocity but if this guy is moving he gave it an initial force or he's moving through a constant speed if there is no net force will stop him from moving he will keep moving at that speed forever we see here always when we say a force that means of course as you studied the force as a vector we talk here af net or resultant force all the time so an object moving 
there need to be a force that is stronger than the force he's moving with or the speed he's moving with to be able to stop him from moving so if the f resultant or f net equals zero in this case the delta v for the standstill person or standstill object will be zero and if the f net is zero with a constant speed then the v will be constant and again delta v would be zero anyway because the speed is constant there is another term physical term that is related to the first equation by newton to describe motion that the object has an inertia when you say the object will stand still until a force affect him that thing that keep him stand still called inertia and if the object is moving it will keep moving unless something else or a force that will stop him what keep him moving that's what we call inertia when you hold a bottle of water there is a water into it and you spin it for a little bit then you wait on it you will see the water keep spinning why it keeps spinning you already stopped applying force on it that is the inertia inertia is a simpler term for the mass effect of the body motion don't be confused so if i want to tell you how do you describe the inertia of a coin like in this case a standstill object what is his inertia while he's standing still if i put the object above a cup that is empty there is a plate or a paper above it then you put the coin in the center if you pull that plate assuming you didn't apply any force on the coin you pull it very fast the coin will fall down and be stand still on the base of the cup that is because of inertia the object don't want to move unless there is a force affecting on it in this case the object was sitting on the ground gravity is pulling him down to keep sitting down on the floor or on the plate in this case when you pulled out the plate well he want to sit on the next surface that will keep him sitting still without a motion when you are in a vehicle you can experience inertia in its purest form so let's say you stand still at the traffic light then you push the gas the vehicle start to make acceleration then you will feel your body pulling you backward that's because your body mass is stand still but the vehicle mass is being pushed by the force of the engine in this case your body want to keep at rest or keep in his position but he can't because he's part of the car system in this case so the car will pull him backward towards his seat if you go on a curve you can feel that there is an external force pushing you outwards to be going in a in a straight path but you you fight or resist that and you keep turning but your body will swing away from his center because of the inertia mainly caused by the mass of your body now if you're driving on a high speed with your car then you suddenly hit the brake pedal in this case you will observe that your body is pulling forward that is because you are at a certain speed the vehicle body stopped or reduced that speed but your your own body is still on the first speed so it will push forward until you hold into the steering or push your legs to the floor of the car to be able to decelerate the speed of your body to match the speed of the vehicle that's inertia in its simplest form